Today I'm going to show you how to get started quickly with setting up your Harvest Profit account. So the first thing I wanted to point out is in the bottom left hand corner of the website is the settings tab. That's where you can go in and add a different entity to your farm. Uh, if you have multiple corporate entities like a, a, an entity for brother one and brother two or a father and a son or a husband and a wife, you can add multiple entities there. And then also on that bottom bar is our knowledge base where we have different articles, tutorials. And then the far bottom right is our a link to our support. So the first thing we're going to do, I've already entered in four fields into our Harvest Profit account. So I'm going to go into our Crop Planner tab. And I'm just going to assign, I'll just assign these first two fields to soybeans the next two fields to corn. And here you could add different crops, whereas you could split the field into multiple crops. You, If you had multiple entities, you could assign each field to an entity or you could assign a field to multiple entities. So I'm gonna save that crop plan. And then the next thing, I'm gonna go over to the applications tab and I'm gonna assign some yields to these farms. So. I like to point out that every geo every area is different. You have different yields, different basis, different production. We have customers in some of the highest productivity areas of say central Illinois or southern Minnesota, northern Iowa to you know, some of the lower productivity ground in uh, western Kansas, western North Dakota, eastern Montana. Uh, but at the end of the day, cash rent is the ultimate equalizer. So um, don't get too fixated on yields or prices or basis uh, when looking at a harvest profit demo video like this because every area is much different. So I'm going to put in 50 bushel beans, um, 190 bushel corn. And note that each one of these has a save button here. Uh, you can here's where you can open it up and where we'll be adjusting our seed fertilizer and chemical. Uh, the reason why each one has a save button is they're almost like separate web pages. And so in an instance where we would have 50 plus 100 plus fields to save this page in its entirety, it's very computationally heavy and can take some time. And so doing it on a field by field basis um, makes the software as quick and snappy as possible. So just wanted to point that out. So the next thing we're going to go in and go to the fields tab and put in some land costs. So let's just say the north and south fields we own, east and west fields we rent. So we're going to put in, let's say we rent these fields for $230 an acre. And let's say we own our rented, or we own the north and south field, but we still want to put some costs there just to uh, make sure we're doing apples to apples comparisons on fields. And once again, we're gonna, there's some cash rents in the system from $25 to $300 plus an acre. So don't fixate on that. So we're gonna save the fields once again. Now we're gonna head over to our inputs tab. Um, this is where you put in your Think of it as a list of your fertilizer, seed, and chemical expenses, along with bigger picture overhead items that can be applied across all of your fields. So payments, labor, uh, miscellaneous expenses, consulting, professional services. Uh, so for now, let's throw in a payment. Let's say it's a term payment. Term note, you know, this is a small farm. Um, we'll just say we have a $40,000 term note on some equipment. Then we're gonna put in some fertilizer. Just to keep it simple, we'll put in some 28% UAN, put it at put it at $290 a ton. I should know the conversion here, uh, pounds per gallon. I don't off the top of my head. 10.7 I think is right. Um, well, it's close anyway. So we're gonna go in and put in seed. We're gonna just do corn for now. Corn seed, $200 a bag. You can put in all sorts of, you know, all sorts of different units. You can put custom units even, custom seed counts. Uh, 
per bag per unit. So we'll just do corn seed there. And then a little hack. Oftentimes people say, well, I don't know my per gallon, my per pound prices for chemical off the top of my head, but I know what it costs me per acre. So a quick hack here is you can either list all of your inputs or you could do something like this. I'm going to put it in corn chemical. I'm going to say it's $28 an acre, but I'm going to put it in as a per gallon price. And then when we go to apply this to our fields, we will just apply one gallon per acre to replicate the cost of $28. So we save that. And then the next thing we do is go over to the applications tab. So I'm just going to do corn for now. I'm going to put in uh, some 28%, 28% USA. <laughs> Good job, Nick. 20% uh, UAN. So we're going to put in 12 gallons once. We're going to add another one. We're going to put on 12 gallons again. And then we're going to go and put on corn seed. Say we do 33,000 seeds per acre. We could also split this. So we could put different seed varieties on different amounts of acreage or different seed counts on uh, different zones of the field. You can change from per acre to total. You can put in units per acre, bushels per acre. So we've tried to make it as flexible as possible as far as the unit conversions. Chemical, corn chemical, um, we're going to put on one gallon per acre like I said before. And let's say that we spread our own fertilizer, but we spend $7 an acre times two for our chemicals, so $14 an acre in application costs. So we're going to go up here again, click the save, and then here's a quick hack. Um, most of you likely have way more than two fields for each crop. So if we go to our fertilizer and click the copy button, we can copy that to all the rest of our applications, all the rest of our fields. So I'm going to do that again on seed. I'm going to do that again on chemical. So I have now copied the fertilizer, seed, and chemical over to what in this case is our only other field. So now we have those inputs on each field. Note that you can also add per field expenses or per field revenue. So for crop insurance indemnity payments, uh, maybe you have some drainage work done or something, you can put that here on a, a per field basis. So we have all of them saved. Now we're going to go over to our P&L so we can start to see what our profit and loss is. Uh, obviously, it's going to be highly profitable because we don't have a lot of expenses in, but we can start to toggle between per acre totals. We can go and sort by fields. We can sort by own land or by um, our landlord. We can go in and look at our profit and loss by field. We can export and generate PDFs or Excel spreadsheets. Uh, all in all, we can just slice and dice that P&L in a lot of different ways. So let's take note here of our corn. We have $3.43 as our average cash price. So that today is the December futures price less a basis setting that we put on the settings tab. Um, I put that when I onboarded this account. So right now there's nothing sold for this farm. Let's go in and let's sell 20,000 bushels corn forward contract we're going to go all the way out to say July 2019, futures price 420, negative 20 cent basis, $4 cash price. It's not an open order, it's for the 2018 crop year. So we have 20,000 bushels, $4 cash price. So we go in and save that. So as you can see again, $4 cash price, 20,000 bushels. And on our P&L, we had 343 as our um, average cash price before we made this sale. So if we go back to the P&L, we can see now that our average cash price is 363. So it is the average of the 20,000 bushels sold at the $4 cash price 
plus our 37,000 unsold bushels uh, that are marked at that 343 cash price. So that's the weighted average of all of our sales. And then we can go and look at our what if analysis, our marketing plan. But for the purposes of this video, um, I just wanted to show you how to get an account set up. So I'll, once again, you can set your crops on the crop planner. Your applications tab is for adjusting your yields and your input applications. Inputs is for variable seed costs and or, you know, variable expenses and overhead expenses. And then fields is for setting up custom crop shares and your land costs. So that is a quick way to set up your harvest profit account. In most instances, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I think it can be, uh, most of our users can get it up and running in, you know, approximately an hour. And if there's anything we can help you with or anything we can do for you, we're more than happy to help. Uh, our job is to help you get value out of the platform. So email us anytime, support, support at harvestprofit.com, and we'll do whatever we can to help you out. Thanks, and have a wonderful day.